Hello, everyone, and welcome to Etsy Up. I'm Isabella, and I work on the community education team here at Etsy, and I am so excited to be your host for today's event, which will be packed with expert tips and insights to help you get discovered and grow on Etsy. During today's event, you can expect to hear from Etsy staff, sellers, and industry experts who will be sharing their knowledge on topics such as creating a content strategy, building a standout brand, and driving traffic to your shop. We'll also be celebrating the amazing community of Etsy sellers and the great things that we've accomplished together. We're confident that you'll leave this event feeling inspired and equipped with the tools that you need to make your shop thrive. For everyone joining today, please be sure to check out all of the great things available on etsyup.com. There you'll find the agenda, follow-up workshops, and access to helpful resources that go along with today's sessions. If you're joining this event live, be sure to say hello in the chat on YouTube. It's a great opportunity to connect with other Etsy sellers and ask questions. And you can also take part in the YouTube polls that we'll be sharing throughout the event. Also, keep an eye on the chat for some awesome surprises that we have planned for today's stream. You won't want to miss them. So to kick things off, let us know in the chat where you're tuning in from. I'm here in the Etsy office here in Brooklyn, but I know we've got sellers joining us from all over the world. Ready to get started? I'm thrilled to introduce Raina Moskowitz, Etsy's Chief Operating Officer, who will share more about what we'll cover at Etsy App. Over to you, Raina. Thanks for kicking things off, Isabella. And hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're all here. Today is all about learning, growing, and coming together as a community. You're all joining today from across the globe to learn ways to tell your story, grow your business, and reach new audiences. I can't wait to see how you take everything you learned today and put it into action. Back in March, I shared our three areas of focus for 2023 helping you get discovered by more buyers more frequently, improving the tools and resources that help you run your business, and building a community to support you as you grow. Etsy Up will touch on all three. We'll cover content strategy, trends, marketing, Etsy search, and more. I'm especially excited to be joined today by Malik Descard from Pinterest. As Chief Content Officer, Malik is an expert in creating marketing that resonates with customers and using social media to grow a global brand. This is truly a unique opportunity to learn from an industry leader. You'll also learn ways to use Adobe Express to create professional and inspiring content right from your phone or desktop. And as a special bonus from being here today, you'll get a free three-month premium trial of Adobe Express. Of course, it wouldn't be an Etsy event without opportunities to connect with other sellers. This community is so special, and today you'll get to learn from one another. Be sure to use the live chat to ask questions along the way. Let's try it out. Head to the chat now and let us know what you're most excited to hear about today. I'm also thrilled to share one of the ways we're recognizing and celebrating Etsy sellers in 2023, the Etsy Design Awards. These awards recognize the amazing talents of our global community. So don't miss out and submit your most creative listing at etsydesignawards.com. So, ready to get started? To kick things off, I'll pass it over to Tita, Etsy's social media manager, to share tips for building your brand, helping expand your reach on social media, and using Etsy's marketing tools to help keep customers coming back. Take it away, Tita. Hi everyone, I'm Tita, and I'm a social media manager at Etsy, overseeing the Etsy success, Instagram, and Facebook accounts. If you haven't already, be sure to follow Etsy success on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm here to talk to you about building a content strategy that helps you drive traffic back to your shop using marketing channels like social media. In this session, we'll cover the importance of creating high quality content ways that you can help drive traffic to your shop through shop updates and brand storytelling. And lastly, we'll chat through some actionable tips and strategies for creating engaging content. 
So let's get started. High quality content doesn't necessarily mean content created in 4K or shot on a professional camera and pieced together with fancy editing programs. What really distinguishes content as high quality is whether it's helpful, educational, and provides some sort of value to the audience. Quality content is an important factor in driving people to your Etsy shop to make a purchase. The more your content showcases your product's unique details, the more likely a potential buyer will click and hopefully make a purchase. Think you're not a content creator? Guess again, the photos and videos you add to your listings on Etsy are all content. And we just added some features to the new Etsy seller app to make it easier to share your product listing directly to social media. That means those photos and videos can work double duty, connecting you with shoppers on Etsy and potential customers on social media. Video content is a great way to hook people in and draw their attention. Videos can help distill a lot of information in a short amount of time while being more engaging. Videos are also an important way to make your brand more personal. When you create video content, you're showcasing the person behind your shop and your brand. This helps to form more meaningful connections with your audience and potential buyers. Video content receives more reach and engagement on average. So adding a mix of videos into your current social media strategy can help increase your exposure. Now that you have more information about the importance of creating high quality content for your social channels, let's chat a bit more about additional ways you can drive traffic back to your Etsy shop. Social media is a great way to do this. The first thing we usually recommend is to add a link to your Etsy shop in your bio section on channels like Instagram and TikTok. It's also smart to include your shop link on channels like Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram stories. Linking directly to your shop makes it easy for anyone who comes to your page to then make a purchase. When creating and posting content, or sharing content directly from Etsy, be sure to include a strong call to action and direct people to visit your shop through a link. Reminding people to visit your shop is sometimes the nudge that potential buyers need to click and hopefully make that purchase. There are also some paid ways to help drive traffic back to your shop, including Etsy ads. Etsy ads make your listings more prominent for millions of buyers searching on the site. You set a daily budget, let your campaign run, and will continually optimize how your budget is spent over time to boost your exposure in Etsy search results. We'll include more info on setting up Etsy ads in this video's description. So what if you're already successfully driving traffic back to your Etsy shop? Well, did you know we have a program where you can earn a commission for every sale you drive to Etsy through your social media channels? Our referral program called Etsy Creator Co. is a great way to help you get rewarded for the amazing work you're already doing on your channels. You can apply at creatorco.etsy.com. Once approved, you will begin earning commission for sales right away. All you need to do is insert your Creator Co. tracking link on social channels and every approved sale means more money for you. In addition to earning commission for the sales you drive, members of Creator Co. will enjoy special benefits in 2023, including access to exclusive Etsy content, trend reports, and you'll even get the chance to be featured in Etsy paid advertising. Now, let's chat more about actionable tips to create engaging content. First, think about your niche. What kind of items are you selling? Once you know what your niche is, you can start exploring what sellers in that same area are sharing on social media. Are you a potter? Think about creating videos showing off your process. Are you a vintage seller? Think about creating a day in the life video where you can take your audience with you as you source items for your shop. Sometimes the best inspiration comes from your fellow creators, but be sure to make it your own by putting a unique spin on it. Next, think about ways that you can engage your audience and ask them questions. For example, if you're a stationary seller and you're in the process of releasing new stickers, ask your audience which sticker they like. This helps to create a dialogue with your potential customers and allows them to be part of your creative process. We've also seen sellers create pack and order with me videos. Pack and order with me videos are a great way to show behind the scenes footage of your business and all the work that goes into each package you send out. Don't forget to check out the social sharing features in the Etsy seller app. 
In the app, you can easily share your listing videos and photos to your social accounts right from your listings. Just go to the listing you want to share and follow the prompts to promote it on your social channels. This is a great way to tell your followers about any new items you've added to your shop. We're also working on additional social sharing features, like the option to quickly share a five-star review to your social media accounts, so you can show off your stellar customer service. Be sure to follow Etsy Success on Facebook and Instagram to get updates when we add new features. You can find our social channels linked in the video description. As we wrap up this session, I want to leave you with a few key takeaways. First, Quality content doesn't mean that you need to use professional grade equipment. Remember, it's about creating value. Think about what you would want to see as a potential customer scrolling online. Next, remember that a strong call to action is so important. Always link your shop on social media when possible. Also, utilize Etsy's social sharing tools to share listing photos and listing videos. Sharing a strong call to action is a gentle way to remind potential buyers to check out your items and hopefully make the sale. Lastly, if you see something that inspires you, find a way to put your personal spin on it. Don't forget to showcase what makes your products unique and don't be afraid to show your personality in your content. For more social media tips, join us for the upcoming Social Media 101 workshop where we'll break down everything you need to get started with social marketing. And be sure to download the Etsy Seller app to check out how we've made it easier to share content from your shop to social media. I can't wait to see what you create. During the pandemic, people were really interested in buying games. It's such like a fun thing to do with your family. People were writing messages and saying, I'm going to give this to my niece or my friends. That really made me feel like I could do it. <laughs> I could live out of making my own products. My name is Jonathan, and my shop is Atelier de Montreal. And I sell wooden games and accessories. I worked in architecture and in industrial design for 12 years. And so I was always interested in creating objects, making lamps. That was one of the first items I made. I presented them in a craft show and people were really interested. A few years ago, I had some friends who had Etsy shops and they were making a living selling their own things and they, they had their own studios. And it seemed fun like that I could have my own shop and live from this. So that's why I started selling on Etsy. I got like one first sell and then after that just added more products and that's where I'm at now. I would describe my style as contemporary craftsmanship because I use uh, industrial design techniques and I pair them with traditional materials like wood. I always work with something graphic like a pattern or a motif. I use CNC machines and lasers but then after that, I'll do like an oil finish. I was excited to collaborate with Amber Lewis. She worked with fabric and texture a lot, being an um, interior designer. We decided to work on a checkers game. I really got inspired by something that was on her website, and it was a pattern of a pillow. So I took that pattern, and then I transferred it on my game. When you work as an um, independent designer, it's always refreshing to see that you can be inspired by something new. If you haven't noticed, some of our speakers today, including myself, are wearing beautifully handcrafted pieces made by Etsy sellers. All of the products worn or featured today are linked in the YouTube description, and we'll also be shouting out the featured sellers in the live chat. So be sure to check out these amazing shops and show them some love. Speaking of the many incredible sellers on Etsy, how exciting is it that the Etsy Design Awards are back? Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, you could be the winner of an Etsy Design Award. Along with some amazing prizes, it's an opportunity to grow your business and be introduced to new buyers around the world. 
so visit etsydesignawards.com to apply. Applications will be open through May 26th. Let us know in the comments if you're going to apply to the Etsy Design Awards or if you've already entered. Up next, we have Kay Whitaker, joining us from Adobe. Kay will walk through some of the most useful features of Adobe Express so you can quickly and easily create professional, inspiring content right from your phone or desktop. Plus, all registered Etsy Up guests received a three-month free premium trial offer in their Etsy Up reminder email this morning. You can also find a link to the Adobe special offer on the Etsy Up website. Thanks for joining us today, Kay. I'm Kay Whitaker, and I am a content creator, digital marketing consultant, and an ambassador for Adobe Express. I help other creative entrepreneurs, many of which who also have Etsy shops, to build strong visibility and grow their audiences for their brands online. I also create content and DIY landscaping projects for fun around my home, and I share my progress all over the internet, and I'm so happy to be here at Etsy Up. As a content creator, I know how hard it can be to stand out online and drive traffic to your content. I can imagine that as an Etsy seller, you encounter some of those same challenges when it comes to your products. One way to stand out online is by improving your branding and your marketing so that you're not only catching your targeted audience's attention, but also keeping them coming back to your shop. In today's session, I'm going to teach you the strategies to help you elevate your brand and stand out as an Etsy seller using Adobe Express to drive traffic and build brand loyalty with your customers. Adobe Express is available on desktop and mobile devices, so you can quickly and easily create on-brand social content, ads, product listings, and more from wherever you are. First things first, you've got to catch your shopper's attention with a unique brand. Having a unique brand for your Etsy shop is so important because it helps customers recognize your shop when they see you in their feed. And when done correctly, it'll entice them to visit your shop when you have new products that are ready for purchase. Having a recognizable brand builds trust and provides a consistent customer experience. It's important that your customers know what to expect and are confident that you'll deliver high quality products and superior customer service. Imagine this, you're walking down a street past some shop storefronts. One shop has a broken sign, dirty windows, and the products in the display are hard to see. The other shop has a shiny, eye-catching sign with a great display in their window, and the shop looks bright and clean. Which shop are you more likely to walk into? Which shop feels more inviting and excites you to browse? Consider your branding like your storefront. When your branding and your shop look great, customers are more likely to stop by for a virtual visit and also more likely to make a purchase. Now lucky for us, building a brand and making brand content is faster and easier than ever thanks to brand kits in Adobe Express. All you have to do is upload your logo, brand colors, and fonts into your Adobe Express brand kit, and then you can easily apply your brand in just one click to make all of your content for your Etsy shop consistent. And even better, when it comes to making standout images in Adobe Express, you also have the ability to create scroll-stopping profile photos, shop banners, and most importantly, product photos using some of the same features you would find in Lightroom or Photoshop. Be sure to register for my follow-up session where I'll go through a step-by-step -step process of how to get this done. You can register over on etsyup.com. If you're a new shop owner, you might be asking yourself, I don't think I have a brand yet. Or maybe you think your existing brand needs an update. Not to worry, Adobe Express has built-in tools to help you build and grow your brand. You can easily make a new logo with the logo maker, pick your brand color using Adobe Color, and get font recommendations right inside of Adobe Express based on the content you're making, all personalized to you. Once you've created an amazing brand in Adobe Express and made the necessary adjustments to your product photos, it's time to tell the world about your shop. 
If you thought creating your brand and editing your photos was cool, wait until you see what else you can do with Adobe Express. As we all know, social media is a huge part of a shop owner's marketing plan. We need content for Instagram, for Facebook, Pinterest. I mean, the list goes on and on. With Adobe Express, you have the ability to take your newly created or updated brand and turn it into amazing social graphics and promotional material for your email campaigns. You can even go as far as making short videos for your social media channels as well. You can choose to either start with some of Adobe Express's pre-made templates, or you can use your own design and create stunning content that may help attract the right buyers to your shop. Believe it or not, it doesn't stop there. With Adobe Express, you have the ability to make an amazing graphic once and use the resize option to automatically update the size to fit all of your channels. Not only is this just an incredibly useful tool for taking graphic design load off of your shoulders, it's also an amazing time-saving tool that increases productivity. Then, when you really want to step up your game, you can use the content scheduling feature in Adobe Express to take that very same content you just created and mass publish it to all of your social channels with just one click of a button. How amazing is that? By scheduling your content across all of your channels, you can optimize your time while reaching the largest amount of potential shoppers. And that's the ultimate goal, right? In closing, you can use today's tips to quickly and efficiently get your brand off the ground and help drive traffic to your shop. But the possibilities of what you can do with your brand on Adobe Express are endless. I am so excited to share that Adobe Express has teamed up with Etsy to offer you a free three-month premium trial for everyone attending Etsy Up. That's it for now, friends. Go grab your free Adobe Express trial and start sharing your products with the world. Thank you so much for all of that information, Kay. There's so many wonderful tools that sellers can take advantage of by using Adobe Express. What type of content do you love to create? Do you like to take photographs or do you prefer to record video? Or maybe you're a writer at heart? Let me know in the chat. Up next, I wanna welcome Etsy seller and YouTuber, Katherine Kay of Catnip Studios. She'll be sharing some advice on how to build a cohesive visual aesthetic a strong brand voice, and an engaging social media presence. Catherine will take us into her studio and share some behind the scenes of how the Catnip Studios magic is made. This session was recorded and edited by Catherine, and she'll be joining us live in the chat today, so be sure to give her a warm welcome and say hello. Let's take a quick trip over to the UK and into Catnip Studios. Welcome to this very special Etsy up video. I'm Catherine, illustrator and director here at Catnip Studios. I can't quite believe it, but it has been over eight years since I started my Etsy business, Catnip Studios. We have accumulated over 81,000 sales on Etsy. I can't quite believe it myself. It's a little small family run business with me, my husband Dean, and my brother-in-law Mike. In this video, I'm actually gonna be talking through how I built the wonderful world of catnip. And although I feel like I'm just getting started with my small business, I have over the last eight years developed my brand to hopefully have like a cohesive and aesthetic theme. In this video I'm going to be talking through what I've learned over the eight years to build my own brand voice. My journey started very very differently to what it looks like now and I'm going to be taking you along with me and sharing how exactly I developed my style to where we are today. 
To build a brand, I believe it's important to have a vision. But if you're just starting out or thinking of opening your very own small business, don't be disheartened if you haven't got a super clear vision in mind just yet. I'll talk about this in a second, but my vision is drastically different now to what it was when I started out. Here at Catnip, I am trying to tell visual stories with my adorable cute characters like Bumblebutt and Gigi, which you can see on the shelf behind me, by bringing them to a range of stationery, merchandise, and hopefully one day children's books as well. A lot of my inspiration came from pop culture, anime, manga, gaming and things I was just naturally drawn to as a child. I've always loved illustrating and creating cute adorable characters since I was young. I knew I wanted to eventually develop my own characters and eventually have my own children's books and characters that put a smile on people's face. And one of the missions here at Catnip that we have is to create a feeling of happiness and joy when you look at our products. To me, I'm not just selling products, I want to sell a feeling as well. I want you to look at our adorable characters and kind of get a little bit of joy out of them. So ask yourself, what is your brand vision? This may sound intimidating at first, but really it's pretty simple. Ask yourself a few of these questions like, what do you want to sell? Who is your target audience? We will go into this in a little bit. And what is the feeling you want your brand to portray when people find you? For example, maybe you want to be cool, trendy or minimalist, or maybe like me, you want to build a wholesome family friendly brand. Like I mentioned earlier, don't be too disheartened if you haven't got a very clear brand vision in mind. This is what this video is all about. When I started back in 2015, my style looked considerably different to what it does today. I had to develop my style over time and grow as an artist and illustrator to be able to do what I wanted to do in the long run. When I first originally started out back in 2015, I actually had a full-time and part-time job. I used to actually read the Etsy Quit Your Day Job blog series on Etsy with other inspiring artists and sellers and listen to their journey and how they managed to go full-time with their Etsy business. After getting inspired, I decided to take the plunge and open my Etsy store with the little skills and the knowledge that I had. So I actually began my journey by selling custom portraits. I then began experimenting and developing my style to what it is today. And it took daily practice and daily illustrations to get where I am. In the meantime, I kept selling custom portraits and experimenting with my products and what I wanted to sell here at Catnip, where I built up the skills as an illustrator to create these cute characters you can see today. My original goal for the Etsy shop was just to make a simple minimum wage that could sustain me and I could be fulfilled doing something that I loved doing. And I studied graphic design at university and I knew the importance graphic design had on brands and logos. I'm still using one of the very first logos I sketched out for my Etsy business back in 2015. But one thing I learned along the way is the importance of brand colours and aesthetic. This can really elevate your brand to the next level and was one of the ways I made Catnip more distinguishable as a brand. I decided pretty early on that pastel colours was going to be the perfect aesthetic for Katni. I wanted to create a wholesome, cute world filled with cute, adorable stationery and characters and pastel colours really worked well for this. And pink was one of the main brand colours I decided to use very, very early on. And also it was inspired by what I personally found appealing to me. Pink is one of my favourite colours and pastel colours also work so well. If I use dark, grungy, gothic colours, it it wouldn't be catnip and it wouldn't be that cute wholesome feeling that I wanted to portray. So I learned very very early on to stick to a limited colour palette. So ask yourself what colours could represent your brand? What is your brand's vision? Maybe you are into minimalism so white neutral tones may work for you and your brand. Maybe you're more into a gothic dark grungy feel. That way dark purples, dark blues, dark browns could be a great brand aesthetic for you. Just sit down and write Write down a few points of what your brand voice is going to be and what colours you can use to represent that brand voice. This also brings me on to my next point which is get to know your audience. Your colours will also reflect your audience base. 
I personally was my own demographic and I used myself and what I found cute and what I would personally purchase as a start to catnip. It's a good idea to build up a character profile of what exactly your ideal customer is. For me, for example, it was a female between the ages of 18 to 35 who had an interest in cute, wholesome characters and Japanese pop culture such as anime and manga. Narrowing this down really helped bring my brand colours and aesthetics together because I knew exactly what I needed my work to look like in order to appeal to my perfect customer. Now I had my logo and my brand colour and my target audience in mind, I began to take it a little step further and even draw in those little details even more by the use of using exclusive fonts. I actually made my own fonts and also found some fonts and got the licenses for those fonts to use across the board in catnip so that each design or each product, each packaging had the same cohesive font throughout. That being said, these did change over time and it's good to keep an eye on current graphic design or design trends in general. You'll often see big companies and little companies updating their brand image to keep in line with the modern day. Let's show a little example. Between 2015 and 2018, for example, I noticed big trends around animals and characters such as pugs, mermaids and unicorns. The use of slimline handwritten fonts were also pretty popular, so I was sure to keep on top of those trends and incorporate them in my product. That being said, it should still fit in with your brand voice and remain consistent with your overall theme of your brand. You shouldn't really be changing your brand and your fonts too often. I have definitely had around two slight brand changes throughout the course of these eight years to keep up to date with modern design trends. You wanna keep an eye on the trends that are in your niche and your audience demographic. Okay, we've got our brand and now it's time to start developing products. I didn't just experiment with illustration, I also experimented with my products as well. I had a big experimental phase where I really tried to niche down on what I wanted catnip to create. Ultimately, we have developed into kind of a lifestyle brand full of stationery, pins, and now we're branching out into clothing, hats, and more. But it didn't start out like this. I developed and experimented with my products and often would invest in a Lot of internal machinery and teaching myself how to use techniques such as sublimation to print my very own mugs, mouse mats and more. This way I could experiment with different designs and see what connected with my audience while not investing too much money in a bulk of products that I didn't know was going to sell. Really got me to understand the feel of my audience and what worked and what didn't. This allowed me to slowly invest in getting things like pins made in bigger quantities because I finally started to know my audience and connect with what worked for them. That being said, sometimes I do make products which I think are going to be like the best sellers and end up not doing so well. So if you're an existing Etsy shop owner, you've probably experienced this yourself. So don't be too disheartened. But also when you're starting out, it is great to experiment and also ask for feedback of your audience. See what they actually used to like. I used to ask a lot of opinions and still do to this day of what my audience want to see. So this can give you a really great insight on what people People want to see from you but you should also keep in mind what you want to do as well but there has to be an audience there for you to sell your products in the first place again this comes back down to doing your target market research and also looking at other brands in your niche and seeing what works for them and what their audience loves in the meantime, while I was experimenting with my products and my style, I also d started developing my social media presence. I started documenting my journey on YouTube very early on. I even implemented my brand voice even in the scenes that I used to film over on social media. I actually created my very own custom filter and colour palette that I would apply to most of my videos so that that would also tie in with the brand voice. And when people seen a video of mine, they would see that it was connected to catnip because I even created my very own custom colour palette for the videos that I would shoot. Bringing in all my brand together so not only did my social media and behind the scenes match the aesthetic of catnip but it also matched my products and brand voice so even my behind the scenes I was mindful to keep those colour palettes in mind. When I moved into my very first studio here at catnip I knew that I needed to bring those brand colours and all my brand voice into the studio as well because I shared behind the scenes I wanted everywhere to look like it'd been touched with some catnip magic and ever since that day we have moved into several different studios but have always remained cohesive with our brand voice. Mm -hmm. 
One of the final touches that could tie up all of the brand aesthetics that we have talked about in this video is your packaging. You have built this brand, you've found your brand colours, you've brought it all together in your social media, you finally got a product to sell. The last piece of the puzzle is to package it all together. That new customer has trusted you with their money to get a beautiful product in return. So I add little touches like pastel pink tissue paper, one of the main colours here at Catnips. I tell you what, why don't we package a catnip order on our Etsy store together? Let's pack an order, shall we? I wanted to make sure that my brand didn't just end online. The order is the most important part and I like to make my customers feel as though they are getting a special gift from catnip. My branding and colour palette runs across all my packaging and products, even down to my shipping materials. We like to wrap our orders in pastel pink complimentary tissue paper and also add a seasonal free art print and card that the customer can collect throughout the seasons. This is a final piece of the puzzle that we hope makes a special customer experience when they choose to shop with us here at Catnip. So there we have it, a catnip order all packaged up and ready to go. So if you're thinking of starting an Etsy store or maybe you have an Etsy store already and you feel like your brand isn't where you quite want it to be, don't worry, I am still changing and adapting and finding my own style. Having a small business is a journey and I am learning new things every single week, even now to this day, to create my very own small business and the wonderful world of catnip. So I keep changing every day keeping an eye on the trends and constantly trying to learn and reach out to all my customers and you guys to keep growing and developing the brand that I have. When I think and reflect about when I was in my full-time job and reading those Etsy Quit Your Day Job articles it's quite surreal to me that I am sat right here with you guys bringing you my own inspirational story about my own journey. The first thing you have to do is just get started and keep going and growing along the way because if I can do it a girl from a very small seaside town in the northeast of England, you can do it too. So don't wait until you're perfect to start because there is just no such thing. You'll grow and develop along the way and I hope you found this video inspirational or helpful in any way. I'll see you guys very soon. All right then, thanks so much for watching. I love you. Goodbye. Thanks, Catherine. Those are such helpful tips. There are so many opportunities to showcase your brand and products across social media. Another question for everyone joining us live today, what social media platforms do you use to drive buyers to your shop? Is it Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, or TikTok? Submit your answer in the poll that's up right now and tell us more in the chat. I'm always interested to hear about all the different strategies sellers use to reach new potential buyers and grow your online audience. Up next, we have Etsy's trend expert, Dana Isom Johnson, who will be sharing insights from our latest Marketplace Trends report and taking questions submitted directly from sellers like you. The insights in this session can help you keep your shop on the cutting edge as you plan ahead and refresh your branding. Over to you, Dana. Hi everyone, my name is Dana Isom Johnson and I'm the resident trend expert here at Etsy. Today, I'm here to share some highlights from our most recent Marketplace Insights report and answer some seller questions we received from the Etsy community. Etsy's Marketplace Insights reports includes timely guidance about insights on products shoppers could be searching for on Etsy next season. Our team creates this helpful resource from industry reports, social trends, buyer market research, and Etsy search data to give you the tools you need to optimize your shop. You can find our spring and summer report linked on etsyup.com.
There are so many trends that I am so excited about this season. I love to see that nostalgic party themes are having their moment in the spotlight. Millennials and Gen Z are shopping for fun, niche birthday decorations, such as graphic 90s, hey, my decade, and Y2K influenced party banners and decorations. This year, we saw a 95% year-over-year increase in searches on Etsy containing 90s theme party decoration. And speaking of throwbacks, vintage inspired country cottage decor is another trend we are seeing for spring and summer. This decor features, oh my gosh, beautiful, floral wallpaper, cross stitch patterns, and mix and match vintage plates and dining that evoke a 1970s cul-de-sac vibe. We saw a 127% year over year increase in searches on Etsy for vintage cocktail glasses. And a style that I'm particularly excited about is maximalism and mixing layers of styles and fabrics. But if you are wanting to explore this trend and you don't quite know how, I want you to consider ways an outfit can play with both modern and vintage pieces. Add light layers and materials like tool and mesh, hello, like this, and think of creative ways your products can be worn together in unexpected ways. Now, I know some of these trend examples don't apply to everyone's products or shops, but be sure to check out the full report so you can find the data that is most valuable for you. Here are a few quick tips for how you can use the Marketplace Insights report and to make the most of what's trending and incorporate these trends into your Etsy shop. First, this report can be a source of inspiration for your new products. You can also expand your potential customer base with products that appeal to a wider range of shoppers like male buyers or customers in other countries. And remember, the trends don't necessarily need to be incorporated into the product itself. Adapting new styles, colors, and themes can show up in many ways. An effective way to tap into trends is by merchandising your shop for holiday buyers by featuring seasonally relevant visuals in your shop graphics and in your listing photographs. Additionally, you can include seasonally appropriate top search terms in your tags, your titles, and item descriptions. You can also time your inventory to take advantage of upticks in relevant searches and in advance of key occasions. And finally, this report can help you choose which listings to promote through Etsy ads. No matter what time of year, you can find the latest version of the report in the seller handbook. So, I now love to answer a few questions from you. Recently, I asked you, the Etsy community, to submit questions and we received a ton of thoughtful submissions. So let's take a look at the first question from the shop Izzy's Crafted Design. Hi Dana, my name is Izzy and I have an Etsy shop called Izzy's Crafted Designs. My question is, can we use Etsy to help us find trends? And if so, how would we do this? Thank you. Thank you again so much for the question, Izzy. And yes, you can absolutely include trends into your shop. Here's how you do it. First things first, take a look at the Marketplace Insights report. You'll get loads of inspiration. Second, check out our Etsy blog. We talk about what's hot, what people are shopping for, seasonal moments. All of this is great inspiration for trends. And then finally, Take a look at all of the social media channels that Etsy has. Our TikTok, our Instagram, our Facebook, our YouTube. All of these channels have really wonderful inspiration in terms of trends. Okay, now let's take a look at the next video from R is for Robo. Hi, Dana. My name is Robin and my Etsy shop is R is for Robo. I mainly specialize in greeting cards, so I was wondering what trends are you seeing in the stationary world? Thanks again for the question. Okay, now let's dig into this for greeting cards. This year, cards are super focused on very specific recipients. So I want you to think specific birthdays, like 90th birthday, 21st birthday, anniversary cards for the husband, for the wife, whatever that may be. But I want you to have customization 
top of mind. Very specific celebrations like bar mitzvahs, doggy birthdays. Yes, you heard me say doggy birthdays. It's very important that we celebrate the fur babies. Postpartum gifting and cards that have just really been focused on particular celebrations. Here's something that I think that will work across all of your celebration titles printables, okay? Because there's always a last minute gifter. So offer options that can be printed from the comforts of their home and offer that last minute gift without sacrificing the specialness. Now, PB and Jammies, you're up next. Let's take a look at your video. Hi, I'm Alex. My shop name is PB and Jammies and I make children's pajamas. I've noticed the last couple years that neutral colors are very popular in children's clothing. I would love to hear your insight on if you've noticed any unique trends that have stayed consistent throughout the years and you see in the future staying pretty consistent as well. Thanks. Okay, thanks again for the question. And yes, gender neutral clothing has been on the rise across all age groups and kids is no exception. Now for spring and summer, I want you to consider bundle dyed fabric and pops of color that are happening. Just like your sweater, it was so beautiful. But there are also an emphasis on natural dyes, more sustainable choices. So thinking about dyeing with, with turmeric or other natural types of ways because shoppers are trying to be more thoughtful about their purchases and the impact they're making on the planet. Now we've also seen searches climb for nature inspired themes as well for kids PJs. All right, up next we have Kiss and Punch with her question. Let's take it away with Kiss and Punch. Hi Dana, my name is Julie. I have a business and Etsy shop named Kiss and Punch. I make cute and funny and often punny letterpress greeting cards, die cut stickers and other gifts. I love illustrating food, but especially animals. And although it's unofficial, there always seems to be a trending animal that you find all over stationery and clothing and whatnot. In years past, it's been like the corgi or a llama, even an axolotl. So my question to you is, what do you think is the new hot animal? I look forward to your answer. Thank you. All right, thanks so much. Let's talk about the most popular animal and if there is one. So I anticipate ocean themes with the sea creatures and mermaids to have a major moment coming off the heels of a popular crustacean core trend that we saw buzzing last year. Now, while I don't think there's one particular animal that's really gonna take center stage, I do think that fruits and vegetables like strawberries and radishes, I think they're gonna gain some popularity in addition to those creatures like mermaids like I was mentioning before. And look, here's the deal. We always take pop culture for inspiration and popularity. And with an upcoming sea theme movie, I think kids are gonna become very excited for those under the sea themes. Thank you so much again. All right, we have a video now from Jordan McDowell. Let's take a look. Hi, my name's Jordan. Um, my Etsy shop is Jordan McDowell Art. Um, and my question is, um, since trends are often in a state of flux and changing, I'm wondering how often Etsy suggests we uh, change and rotate keywords and title listing titles um, to kind of keep up with the verbiage of like the new trends and stuff. Thanks. Hey Jordan, such a great question. Now regarding updates to keywords across your titles, your tags, etc., and staying on top of your search engine optimization, also known as SEO, it's super important. Seasonality and product trends can be a big influence here. But ultimately, how often should you be making these updates really depends on your selling category and target market. That being said, doing a review of your keywords or making slight adjustments quarterly to align with trends and seasonality, that feels like a good approach. Also, stay tuned for our search session with my good buddies, Isabella, Andrew, and Ratish, where they're gonna talk more about SEO. Let's take a look at the next question. Hi, my name's Josiah, and my Etsy shop is called Hephaestus Rings. I was wondering if there's any way I could use trends if I'm not actually going to change my products based on them. Uh, thanks. Absolutely, you can still use trends in your shop. Now look, this is a reminder from the messages I was talking about a little bit earlier, but here are my top tips to utilize trends within your shop and not your listing. The first is, 
update your titles, your tags, and your listing descriptions based on trends that you feel are relevant to you and your shop. Next, I want you to incorporate trending colors into your photography. Then consider gathering inspiration from pop culture. And now, look to your Etsy community. Talk to your fellow sellers about what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Talk to them. And rather than creating full lines of merch that focuses on trends, try one item in your shop. See how that trend performs. If shoppers love the new style, then you can potentially be inspired to make more. I want you to consider treating some trends as tests to see how they'll perform for you. All right, let's see the next question from Carmela's Jewelry. Hi, Dana. I am Carmela. I'm the owner of the Etsy shop Carmela's Jewelry, and I specialize in creating items that carry a lot of meaning for the customer. So I do fingerprint jewelry, handwriting jewelry, and inspirational phrases inside rings and things like that. And one of the trends I've been noticing recently is that customers are looking for gold and rose gold items. And unfortunately, I feel unwilling to offer my jewelry in gold and rose gold because I know that to stay in the same price range that I'm in right now, I would have to add plated jewelry. So over time, I know those the plating color will fade. And so um, I just was wondering how I could possibly stay competitive on Etsy while still offering my customers the highest quality jewelry that I can so that it'll last a lifetime. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks again for the question, Carmela. The great news for you is that silver jewelry is actually making a huge comeback. So that's great news. But the other thing I want you to consider when dealing with trends, guess what? You don't have to follow them all. If you only want to focus on silver jewelry, then consider offering a wider range of styles. For example, I notice in the personalized jewelry space, some makers are creating birthstone necklaces or chain link necklaces with multiple names. The placement of the initials or even the shapes of the pendants can be a little more unique. So consider trying incorporating other styles first and then see how your shoppers react. Thanks again for the question. All right, next we have a question from Jen Kitagawa. Let's see what Jen has to say. Hi, Dana. Um, I'm Jen Kitagawa and I run an Etsy shop called Jen Kitagawa. I am a print and textile artist. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about any trends you are foreseeing in the world of home decor. Thanks so much. Jen, I was so happy to see your question because I'm such a huge fan of your shop. So thank you so much for the question. But now let's dig into it. All right, so we just launched our new home decor trend guide on Etsy news blog. So I want you to make sure that you check that out for even more home decor inspiration. But in the meantime, Home is becoming such a big priority among shoppers. I'm talking the cozy factor is a must. Bring on the blankets, bring on the candles, bring on the floor cushions, all that comfy jazz. Also consider painterly touches because that's an evidence of a hand. Shoppers are loving the idea of buying from artisans, details that really show that a piece is handmade or has history to it. I'm talking to you vintage sellers because they're on trend. They all want that handmade touch. And my favorite that I've mentioned earlier, maximalism. It's having a major comeback at the moment with a focus on mixing and matching bold colors as well as tactile textures. And breaking news, this is so major, we have been loving the Scandinavian look with light tones, but now deep wood tones like mahogany and cherry wood and bold jewel tones are back, baby. So get inspired by that. Thank you again for the question. And that wraps it all up. So thank you so much to all of the sellers who submitted questions. Be sure to RSVP for my follow-up live workshop that I'll be hosting with Isabella, your Etsy Up host and Etsy seller education expert. We'll talk all about 2023 trends and answer your questions about the latest report and how to incorporate the information into your products and branding. There are limited spaces though available for this interactive live workshop. So I want you to make sure to register register now. You can find all the information for this event on etsyup.com. I hope to see you there. Talk about cha-ching. 
The new Etsy Seller app offers a streamlined mobile experience that's packed with the features you use most, providing everything you need to manage your shop efficiently from anywhere. Built based on feedback direct from the seller community, here are a few of the tools you can access using the bottom navigation bar. Starting at home, you'll find the latest updates from customers front and center, keeping time-sensitive information on new orders, messages, and reviews top of mind. Under Messages, you can view the details of a buyer's order directly within the thread, keeping you informed while communicating in real time. Saved replies make it easy to respond quickly to common questions by choosing from a pre-written library of responses. From orders, it's simple to check the status of each order and see at a glance whether it's from a repeat customer. Plus, sellers based in the US can now buy and print shipping labels directly on the app to save time and money. Under Listings, quickly search and manage your shop's inventory to ensure it's always up to date. You can also add and edit photos and listing videos directly from your mobile device, making it even easier to bring your items to life for buyers. And from Stats, you'll find details on your shop's performance, including traffic sources and conversion rate, along with marketing tools to help grow your business. Ready to give it a try? Download the Etsy Seller app for iPhone or Android to get started. Hi, I'm Christy. My shop is called A Jar of Pickles and we sell stationery and small gifts. My shop started in college when I found myself having a lot of free time and I was just designing logos and flyers for student groups. And I started to design greeting cards on the side for fun. Etsy was a great place for me to just experiment. From the profits of greeting cards, I made stickers. And from those profits, I made enamel pins. And from those profits, I made plushies. And I was like, this is actually really fun. So that's when I think I just had a little bit more confidence. Like, I don't know if I want to go back to my corporate job. And I gave notice and I guess that's my story. So my business has changed a lot in space over time. Before when I was just selling greeting cards, it was like in a box under my bed. And then when I got married, it was a room in the house. It grew out of that room into a garage. Last year I was like, we need to move out. We're just, there's no more room. And then a couple weeks later, my parents said, what if you rent out the front of our house? Like we barely use it. We can just clear it for you, all these things. And it just means a lot to me because I'm able to, you know, pay them rent, but also see them, like have lunch with them sometimes. They worked so hard as immigrants from Taiwan in the 70s to create a different life for them and their future generations. I'm living out this creative dream that I have because of the stability that they provided me. This year and for like the foreseeable future, I'm really enjoying growing the team. I love now having people to give me like live feedback for us to collaborate and build something together. I have a studio manager, so she handles all of receiving and inventory and like space. Like she figured out where all the things were going on the shelf. We have a fulfillment person who does 99% of our orders. She packages them. Selling on Etsy has changed my life. It's really given me a path that I never thought was possible for myself. Every single like month, I would learn a tiny new skill. And those skills would kind of compound on themselves and snowball effect to something greater. As my business grew and my customer base grew, I had a lot of people asking me if they could talk to me about running a small business. I think it can feel very stressful and very overwhelming to wear a million different hats at once and trying to figure out a million things at once. What I really care about helping people realize is one step at a time is the best way to go because that way it won't be as overwhelming. SMART goals is a really universal way to set goals. It allows us to focus on what we'll be working on. SMART goals stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, right? So every time you're setting goals, you really should be thinking of these five points that will really help you be the most successful and the most like focused that you can be when you're working towards these goals. So instead of, I'm gonna grow my Instagram following, you're gonna be really specific and be like, I'm gonna work on posting consistently. And instead of just posting consistently, I'm gonna commit to posting two times a week consistently. And then instead of just that, you're gonna be like, by when? I'm gonna post twice a week consistently by the end of the month. And keep breaking those down into little steps of how you're gonna try and get there so that you can reach this like overarching goal of something bigger. 
if you have a large dream as a small business owner or a maker, it's really just about like those small steps that really, really add up. If you really keep at it and if you're really committed to following through on those small steps, like you'll be very surprised to see where you are like a year, two years, three years, five years later. I love all of those helpful tips, Kirsty. Goal setting is such an important part of building and growing a business. So make sure you all RSVP for Kirsty's follow-up workshop on etsyup.com. This is a great place to ask additional questions while you work on setting your own goals. So with that in mind, let us know in the live chat, what's your biggest goal for your Etsy shop this year? We asked sellers on the Etsy Success Instagram what their goals are for 2023, and I pulled a few just to share with you for inspiration. So Claudia from Flower of Love Creation said that her goal is to work on creating videos on how she paints watercolor florals and to use her creativity to paint something unique. I can't wait to see that. Catherine from Cat Hughes Creative said that her goal is to get to 100 sales. You got this, Catherine. I've got some goals for myself and my shop this year, so I really wanna add a listing video to all of my listings and also to start and end my workday at the same time every day and to drink more water. <laughs> I've got a few. I'm looking forward to trying out some of Kirstie's tips to track my own progress. I'm very excited to welcome our next guest speaker, Malik Ducard, who is Pinterest's chief content officer. He's gonna share how to use Pinterest to reach new customers and drive traffic to your Etsy shop. Welcome, Malik. Hi everyone, my name is Malik Ducard and my pronouns are he and him. And in my role as Chief Content Officer at Pinterest, I get to work with a global team of creator managers focused on bringing the most inspiring content from the most inspiring people from around the world to our platform. More than 450 million people come monthly to Pinterest to discover ideas to try, do, or shop. And our mission is to help bring everyone the inspiration to create a life they love. Our goals are to continue to grow the ecosystem of content and to establish a flywheel of economic value for creators. Pinterest is uniquely positioned to recapture the joy of the shopping experience because we sit at the intersection of discovery and commerce because we know that Pinterest shoppers are 60% more likely to feel excited about shopping and browsing on Pinterest compared to other social media. Now in 2022, more than 227 billion Etsy products were seen on Pinterest and 7 billion products were engaged with. Now that led to more than 110 million orders from Etsy sellers that Pinterest influenced. So as you can see, there's a huge audience of potential buyers on Pinterest looking for content just like yours. Now, we're also continuously evolving our formats and publishing tools to share ideas and stories in the most inspiring way. Now, I get to work very closely with our product team to make sure our overall strategy aligns with your needs. And of course, we're constantly listening and we're constantly learning as we're building and testing new programs, new tools and new formats that enable creators and pinners to build a life they love. Now Etsy's mission is to keep commerce human and Pinterest is one of the most natural extensions of that mission. Billions of products and ideas have been handpicked and curated by real people on Pinterest, and millions of those are products from you, from Etsy sellers. Now, pinners come through the front door with intent. And unlike other channels where users go on to catch up on their network or news, pinners come to the platform to bring their inspiration and turn it into action. Because 97% of searches on Pinterest are unbranded, 
This indicates that pinners come in with an open mindset, ready to discover unique brands and sellers like yourselves. Pinterest is where people find their favorite products and actively search, it's not passively scroll. They come seeking inspiration and leave knowing what they're gonna purchase. Pinterest is also evergreen, which means that your content does not have an expiration date and will continue to get saved by pinners as the months and years pass, and you'll continue to drive earned sales. People are always looking to get inspired, which increases the likelihood of conversion. Pinterest users really have a positive experience on our platform, and we thrive on building a positive space to create and express yourselves to an inspired audience. Now, we also partner closely with the Etsy team about how Etsy sellers can make the most out of Pinterest. And we've been told that many of you use Pinterest but there are still a lot of great opportunities to better leverage the platform and grow your business and be discovered by future buyers. Now, we're really excited to help you as small businesses to thrive on Pinterest, and as a result, build on your customer base on Etsy. Pinterest is another channel to reach new buyers and get discovered. Every single day, Etsy sellers upload fresh products to Pinterest, allowing their products to get distributed all across the platform organically and through Etsy's off-site ads program. Now, this process helps put the perfect product in front of the right person at the right time when they're seeking inspiration. Now, there are new ways for sellers to get involved on Pinterest to help build your personal brands and tell your stories. Sellers can now create videos on Pinterest and then tag your products in the videos to make them shoppable. These videos are then distributed all over Pinterest to inspire people to click through to your shop. And as you see here, this seller did a great job of repurposing their video content, sharing it on Pinterest, and then creating an engaging and inspiring experience for pinners. Now we've developed new ways to make your content more shoppable. Utilize our new tools like product tagging that enables you to make your content shoppable so you can share your products with your audience and help them go from inspiration to action. Now with this tool, you'll also have the ability to tag the exact product you're featuring in your content and reach a new audience to drive sales. Now, we know you're not only storytellers, but you're story doers. And when you motivate your audience to do, try product placement within your pin content to try and entice potential new customers and inspire them to do and to purchase. Use video to showcase your product in action. Now, some general tips I'd give you. Use high quality images link to your Etsy shop in all your pins, leverage product tagging, leverage keywords and rich descriptions, and create boards that relate to your Etsy shop. It's all there for you. Convert your account to a business account to get access to the Creator Hub and look at your analytics to see how your pins are performing. Now, you can also filter by outbound clicks so then you can see how much actual traffic you're driving to Etsy and see how people are engaging with your content overall. You'll have great insight on what pins your audience are gravitating towards and learn more about what exactly your buyers are looking for. So I wanna say thank you so much and keep doing it. Remember, Pinterest is an incredibly powerful discovery platform, and we've seen merchants who upload their catalogs see an up to 90% increase in product saves and 30% increase in attributable checkouts in the last six months. So take advantage of this potential audience of creators and shoppers. And also, if you wanna dive even deeper into how you can leverage Pinterest to grow your business, make sure you RSVP for our follow-up event in Etsy's event space. You'll find the link to register on etsyup.com. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Malik, for sharing all of those helpful tips for how Etsy sellers can utilize Pinterest to reach new potential customers and drive traffic to their shops. As an Etsy seller myself, I understand the importance of having a strong online presence to attract customers and drive sales. And that leads me into our next session, which is all about search engine optimization, also known as SEO. So SEO can help boost your visibility and increase traffic to your shop. And in this session, we're joined by SEO and Etsy search experts, Ratish and Andrew, who will be sharing their insights and expertise. We'll be answering questions about the differences between Google and Etsy search, review common misconceptions around SEO, and share actionable tips for improving your search ranking. Welcome, Ratish and Andrew. Can you both just take a moment to introduce yourself and tell us what you do here at Etsy? Ratish, we'll start with you. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Ratish Narur. I'm the global head of SEO at Etsy. Um, me and my team work on optimizing for Google or Bing search engines and drive a lot of traffic and sales to our wonderful se uh, sellers and their products. Thank you so much for being here, Ratish. Andrew, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Andrew Stanton. I'm the product director here at Etsy for Search. My teams are responsible for all aspects of the search experience, which includes the user experience that buyers inter interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, all the way down to the algorithms, which choose which listings to show in which order on the page. Great, well, thank you again for being here. Thank you both so much. Uh, before we get into our questions for today's sessions, let's do a quick review. SEO is the process of affecting the visibility of a website or a web page in a search engine's unpaid results, often referred to as like natural, organic, or even earned results. Etsy Search specifically is a powerful tool designed to match buyers with the items they're looking for, making it easy for them to make a purchase. On Etsy, there are two phases of how search works, query matching and ranking. We'll explore these phases of Etsy search a bit more later today with Andrew. The other search engine we're talking about today is Google. You've probably used Google before to go to a particular website or shop for something online. When you appear in Google search results, it's called your search ranking. Rankings are always changing, and Google frequently makes updates to how it determines a page's rank, but optimizing your Etsy shop and listings using SEO best practices can help your pages appear in search results. We'll dig into this more with Ratish. If you're new to SEO or you want to do a quick refresher, be sure to check out the ultimate guides to Etsy search and Google search, which are linked in the description of this video. So let's get started. We have some questions that were submitted from the community ahead of this session, so I'll go ahead and get into my first one here. Uh, can you both do a quick high-level overview of how search works? We'll start with you, Andrew, and discuss Etsy, and then Ratish will discuss Google. Wonderful. So let's take a step back for a second and talk a little bit about Etsy holistically. It's what we call a two-sided marketplace, which means we have buyers on one side and sellers on the other. And those sellers have produced 110 plus million products on Etsy for buyers to purchase. Now, matching the right buyer to the right product is a hard task, and that's where search comes in. We're trying to understand what a buyer is interested, what the mission they are on today is, and what that listing is offering to make sure that we can find that perfect item for that buyer and deliver a perfect experience such that they'll come back again and again and again. The way we do that is through two phases. The first one that we talked about is query matching. And that's by taking a look at the query and a look at the contents of that listing and seeing if there's a synergy between the two of them. Once we've figured out that candidate set, we then take it and pass it through our search ranking algorithms. And what these search ranking algorithms are doing is they're trying to pick the right order of listings to show that buyer so that we can always find the top 48 listings to present to that buyer that will give them the best chance at finding something delightful. Okay, thank you for that. Ratish, Google search? Sure. Um, Google uh, uh, crawls the internet to find new content every day, and they spend a lot of time crawling Etsy.com and its landing pages on a regular basis. Um, so our job as an SEO is really to make it uh, easy for Google to find our pages, new listings, new shops on Etsy, um, and then rank them uh, on Google on a regular basis. Uh, the process definitely includes crawling, indexation of those pages, and then ranking them. Um, so Google SEO is purely those steps, and we just facilitate that and help Google do that better. Okay. 
Thank you both. It sounds like Etsy search and Google search follow the same sort of principles. Um, can you both confirm? And then also, I wanna ask you about conversion rates specifically and how it impacts search results. So Ratish, let's start with you in Google search. Sure, uh, conversion rate on Etsy.com uh, really doesn't affect rankings on Google.com, but engagement and uh, the way how users engage with the content, uh, like the images or the videos that are posted on listing pages, does matter. For example, if uh, somebody is searching on Google, uh, they came to Etsy.com, uh, one of the shop page or a listing page, they didn't find what they were looking for, they bounced back or clicked the back button on Google um, and went back to the search result, mm -hmm. that can affect negatively on your rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not really conversion rate, but it's more engagement on the pages. So you need the right highest quality content on the pages, which really helps you with keeping them on the page. Got it, okay, that makes sense. Andrew, conversion rate on Etsy search, how does that play out? It is so important. You gotta remember what the point of Etsy search is. It's to match a buyer with that perfect item in our huge inventory. And one of the best signals we can get from a buyer is whether or not they're willing to buy it. If they're willing to open up their pocketbook and pull out a credit card and actually purchase that item, that means to us that this item is likely very satisfying for that buyer. But it's more than just that, right? It not only does that train our search algorithms, but also can earn a lot of those coveted badges, which also really help influence buyers, such as the best seller badge, popular now, uh, and of course that coveted star seller. And of course, the more purchases you get, the more reviews you get, the higher the star rating you get, and that of course also really helps buyers determine when they're comparison shopping, which product they're likely going to go with. All right, so it's all sort of connected. Um, so you talked about engagement being really important to Google. Does sending traffic to your shop via Google impact your visibility in Etsy search? When we send traffic to listing pages for shop pages, it doesn't impact Etsy search. Okay. Etsy search is really paying attention to when a buyer comes to the search bar on Etsy, types in a query, and engages with products. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned before, there's more than just that. There's the star ratings, there's the review count, there's the sale count. Those are so important to buyers in helping to determine which of two products that might be similar they should go with. And of course, can continue to earn you those badges I talked about before as well. Okay, so for Google, you really wanna optimize for engagement. For Etsy, you really wanna optimize for conversion. It's different, but I bet there's a lot of overlap there in terms of how you optimize. All right, so Ratish, why should you optimize for Google search in the first place? Sure, uh, Google is a large search engine. Millions of people search on Google every day. There's a good chance that you can drive all those or much of those searches into Etsy, to your shop, to your listing pages. And the more traffic that you get on, uh, on your listing page, uh, it can definitely affect uh, uh, purchase uh, uh, patterns. Uh, so I would definitely say that look at Google as a good marketing channel that can drive a lot of visits, drive a lot of sales, and thereby improving your Etsy search also at the same time. Okay, great. So getting into more of the tactical uh, pieces of the approach here, I wanna talk about listing titles. This comes up a lot within our seller community. Um, how long should a listing title be? And should we separate the phrases in the title by commas? Um, Ratish, I wanna start with you. Sure, uh, great question. Uh, Google does not recommend an exact title length. Um, their title best practices is to really keep the title descriptive or concise. Um, so pay attention to the first um, 50 to 60 characters of your title. That's often with what will show in Google search results. Um, so that's really important. Um, uh, and then repeating the same word multiple times can look spammy. Uh, we sometimes call it keyword stuffing. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend uh, keyword stuffing by using the same word again and again. Um, and uh, commas, it's totally fine. If, if it really describes the product using commas, uh, uh, you are free to use it and, and uh, it won't affect Google SEO. Okay, so it sounds like sellers really need to find the right balance between being descriptive yet keeping it easy to read, concise, and then punctuation doesn't necessarily have an impact, but if it keeps the title readable, 
maybe you want to go with commas. Exactly. Okay, cool. Andrew, anything to add there in terms of Etsy search? That is such great advice that Ratishas gave. I want to add a couple of other things to be thinking about when you're coming up with your titles. So the thing you have to remember about Etsy is that there's multiple different experiences that buyers will see. They'll see it on iOS, they'll see it on Android, they'll see it on desktop, and they'll see it on mobile web. And each one of those experiences have a different amount of space that they can show that title. So when you're thinking about the title to actually build, really focus on those first few words because those are what a buyer is going to look at to really understand what this product is. The second thing I'd point out is that Buyers often start with images. They're looking through a page, and then if they have questions, they're not entirely sure what this product is, mm -hmm. they'll look at that title to really help understand a bit more what it is. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in a position where you have a listing title that doesn't really describe the product well, mm -hmm. the buyer might just be let more confused than they started, and that will hurt your ability to sell to that particular buyer. Right, it could impact your conversion rate there. Correct. Okay, great. I think that's really good advice, makes a lot of sense. So yeah, keep it easy to read, yet descriptive. Make sure it is relevant. You're answering buyer questions, potentially. Good stuff. Okay, now I wanna talk about listing descriptions and how they impact Google SEO and Etsy SEO. Um, we often hear about those first 150 characters. Can you both talk a little bit more about listing descriptions and the role they play in search ranking? Ratish, I'll start with you. Sure. Uh, for Google, uh, listing descriptions are super important. Um, um, when they are actually crawling uh, your listing page, um, they really go through the entire description. So it's not really the first 150 characters when it comes to Google SEO. They go through the entire information, try to understand and digest what are you really trying to sell, um, and then improve your rankings based on that. So I will highly recommend that when you're writing description, um, you make sure that you include information like size, material, special features, technical specifications, shapes, patterns, et cetera. So you have enough information that you can provide to the user. Uh, so make it as clear as possible when you're writing description. Okay, great. And how about for Etsy search, Andrew? I know this is kind of a newer thing for us. It is. Uh, for a long time, we didn't look at description text, but over the last year or so, we've been looking at it a little bit more concretely. And as Ratish said, there's so many options and opportunities to really showcase your listing in ways that might not make sense in the listing title or tags. Right. We look at the first 150 characters because we know when a buyer looks at descriptions, they're probably going to read those. We pull out many of the same things that Ratish was talking about, styles, material, uh, sizings. And we don't use it for candidate matching, so that query matching phase, but we do use it to help understand if a buyer has a particular um, affinity toward a particular style. We might use that to help rank that item up or perhaps down, depending on their personal interests. Okay, so first 150 characters, important for Etsy, but really your entire description is important, especially if you're trying to optimize for Google. 100%. Okay. Yeah, this sounds like a great place for additional keywords, maybe those that didn't make it into your title if you're trying to keep that on the concise side. Um, great advice. All right, so now I wanna talk about keyword stuffing. This is something Ratish brought up earlier. Um, let's talk about why keyword stuffing is bad and um, can you tell us how it impacts Etsy search as well? Um, we'll start with Ratish and Google search. Yeah, so keyword stuffing, um, uh, for Google, uh, it really looks like you're spamming uh, when you're writing the same word multiple times, right? Uh, that's kind of the definition of keyword stuffing. Uh, so we we definitely don't want to spam Google and confuse Google at the first time. And then again, if you think of it, it's also kind of confusing users when they end up um, on your pages. Um, so uh, if a title is using the same word multiple times, it can confuse them, it can affect their conversion or their desire to buy your product. Uh, so I would def definitely recommend avoid keyword stuffing. Use as as defined. Uh, use the title tag in a in a way that is descriptive and concise, and help both Google and users at the same time. Right. Really, like lean into variety as much as possible. Yes. Okay. Um, Andrew, talk to me about keyword stuffing and Etsy search. Keyword stuffing does not help you on Etsy. Okay. In fact, it might be one of the worst things you can do. And let me explain why. Okay. Whenever you're repeating a word or repeating a phrase, you're missing an opportunity to market your product to a different type of buyer. Right. 
we want a buyer to be able to look at this listing and look at this listing title and understand what this product is. And if you repeat things, you're not really giving them new information. Mm -hmm. So be very thoughtful about those titles. Make sure it's factual. Make sure it's relevant. And one other thing that's really important is, is make sure that uh, all the descriptors you use in that title are true to your listing. Because if they're not, you might end up getting penalized by the Etsy ranker. It'll view it as irrelevant for those mm -hmm. types of queries. Right, again, impacting your conversion rate. Okay, so taking a step back, how can our sellers tell if they are keyword stuffing? Can you guys define it a little bit more? Um, Ritesh, I'll start with you. Sure. Uh, Google's definition of keyword stuffing uh, is really keyword stuffing refers to the practice of filling a web page with keywords or numbers in an attempt to manipulate rankings on Google search result, right? Uh, so the best practice to really uh, look at whether you are accidentally keyword stuffing is reading your title again and again and really making sure that you're not using the same word. If you are, try to rewrite it, make it easy for both users and Google to understand what you're trying to sell and you will be out of keyword stuffing. All right, Andrew, anything to add about keyword stuffing there? Pratish gave such a great answer. I don't really have a whole lot to add. I think okay. that advice is great. Okay, so it's not just repeating the same word multiple times, but it's also using words and phrases that aren't relevant to your product. That's also keyword stuffing is kind of what I'm hearing here. That's true. Okay. All right, and so if a seller is repeating a word more than once in the title, but it's a part of a common phrase that does describe their title, that's okay, right? That's not keyword stuffing. Yes, okay. it, that should be totally fine because it's explaining or helping the right. user understand the product. Okay, so then like an example of keyword stuffing might look like personalized gift for mom, comma, personalized gift for mother, comma, personalized gift for mom, right? Exactly. Okay, so then like a better title might be something like personalized gift for mom with children's names. That's a great example. Okay, love it, great. Thank you for clarifying. That's been a hot topic. All right, so next, moving on to listing tags. Um, tell us about why, or maybe why not, listing tags are important to search. Ratish, I'll start with you. Sure, um, listing tags um, really doesn't affect rankings on Google, um, uh, but uh, it does have implications on a few other things. Uh, for example, when you're adding listing tags on your listing pages, um, we do use it for understanding whether we should list your product on certain market pages or other landing pages that we have on Etsy. Uh, so to answer your question, um, listing tags doesn't affect your listing page rankings on Google, but it does drive a lot of traffic uh, to other landing pages, which can drive more sales to your shop. Okay. I've run into a few of those market pages. All right. Um, Andrew, listing tags and Etsy search. I know they're important. Tell us more about that. They're so, so important. Listing tags are used everywhere in search. We use it for query matching. We use it for query ranking. Mm -hmm. We make sure that we bring it in any place where perhaps a descriptor and a title might not make sense or a descriptor and a description might not make sense. Use all of them. It's a great opportunity to market your listing to multiple other buyers' interests. So, and that's actually a really important point. Don't go generic. Try to go specific with your tags. Make them multi-word. Really try to find a niche which uh, you could really cater to uh, better than maybe your competitors could. Okay. Yeah, so you don't want to do like necklace as a tag, right? You'd want to do like birth month necklace or exactly. statement necklace, something a little more specific, right? It's going to be really hard to show up in a search for necklace. Um, okay, so tags, super important in different ways for Google search and Etsy search. Yes. Awesome. Um, okay, and yes, remember, use all 13 tags available to you per listing, and I would take Andrew's advice leaning into those phrases versus those single words. The more words and phrases you've applied to your listings, the wider the array of searches they can appear in, right? Okay, now let's move on to listing images. 
I want to hear from both of you about the role of listing images in search ranking. And then we also have some very specific questions around having logos or watermarks, some sort of overlay on your images, and whether or not that can impact search ranking. So Ratish, I'll start with you. Talk to me about images in search ranking. Sure. Um, the main reason, um, uh, we do a lot of SEO in making sure that Google understands your images, and that helps Google drive a lot of traffic from Google Images. Um, logos or watermarks um, uh, are not forbidden in Google Images uh, best practices, um, uh, but high quality images really matters when it comes to Google giving you the right uh, points for, um, for Google SEO rankings. Um, um, uh, and also to understand, um, if you're have, having a large logo or a watermark in your image, um, uh, and the thumbnail which is shown in Google search result, if it's covering the actual image, that can affect your performance on Google SEO. Okay. Andrew, listing images and Etsy search. Tell us about that. Images are critical. When a buyer does a search, they're going to look through this grid of images. High quality, well posed, well lit images do the best. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have something like a logo or some type of branding on there, it might add a lot of distracting noise to that image. And that might make it harder for that buyer to figure out what you're actually selling. Mm -hmm. So my recommendations are very similar to Ratisha's, which is try to make it as high quality as you can. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily penalize you for using it, but it's not offering the best buyer experience and that might impact your conversion. Right, and I know that like the Etsy merchandising team for editorial purposes will sometimes avoid those images that have those overlays, those watermarks. Um, so yeah, just something to think about. I know some sellers want to use them to protect their images, but there's other kind of tricks you can do to really um, make sure your branding is, is captured there. Um, what about listing videos? I'd love to hear your opinions on videos. This is another hot topic right now. Andrew, I'll start with you. Videos are super awesome. Uh, when buyers come to the website and they see search results, you can see buyers spending time I'm hovering over the videos on listings oh, yeah. and watching those. Uh, add them. Buyers love it. It really helps uh, sell the product in a way that a still image can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe not directly impacts the search ranking, but there's that indirect conversion rate element at play there again, correct? Correct. OK, and how about for Google? Same answer, very important for Google SEO. Um, uh, we've been doing a lot of SEO work uh, within our team uh, to help Google find your videos that you're posting, um, and uh, it can drive a lot of uh, uh, traffic from Google videos. Mm -hmm. The tab that you saw on Google uh, can drive a lot of uh, visits. Um, and it's also an important metadata when it comes to a listing page. Mm -hmm. uh, so I highly recommend add a video. We'll do our job to make sure Google sees your videos. Yeah, kind of helpful for that more um, not necessarily conversion, but engagement aspect that you were talking about earlier. OK, great. So moving on to inventory now, um, does the number of listings in your shop impact your SEO? Ratish, I'll start with you. More listings, yes, more content on your pages when it comes to a shop page. Mm -hmm. So I will recommend that if you have good number of listings under your shop, the your shop page will look really filled and uh, a lot of um, options for users to purchase. Uh, so it will definitely affect Google SEO mm -hmm. and highly recommend multiple listings on your shop. Right, so like also adding that like layer of credibility to your shop just because you have more inventory. Agreed. Andrew, what about you? Yeah, I agree with Ritesh on this one as well. Uh, more inventory is more opportunities to sell to a buyer. Mm -hmm. One of the things you have to remember is that uh, buyers are oftentimes looking for variations of something they might be attracted to. Mm -hmm. So having more inventory can help uh, provide additional variations for that buyer to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, one hot tip that might be really helpful for sellers to know is that the search engine really likes shops which have a defined niche, you know, some type mm -hmm. of stylistic element or some type of theme that really combines it together. And so when new listings are added for that shop, well, the search engine already knows the shop is good for those types of listings and will give it an additional benefit in the search rankings. Okay, I wanted to ask you about one-of-a-kind items and vintage items, too, where there's not necessarily a ton of quantities available or, um, you know, a ton of that item for sale in the shop. So 
Does this come into play for those types of listings? Very much so. In fact, this is probably most beneficial for those types of sellers. Okay, awesome. That's really good to know. All right, so moving on to shipping, I want to ask about shipping price and how that impacts a listing's SEO. Um, let's start with you, Andrew. How does shipping impact search on Etsy? Yeah, so shipping price is considered inside of the search ranking algorithms. Mm -hmm. And you have to put yourself in the buyer's shoes, right? If you have a $10 item that you're selling and then they get to check out and it's $20 shipping fee, mm -hmm. that might give a buyer pause right. on say, oh, this, this is a surprising price. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I want to have sellers think about when they're figuring out the prices for their items is whether or not a buyer is going to have a great experience with it. Yeah, great point. Ratish, how about you? Shipping and Google SEO. Sure, it's a great metadata within the listing page. Um, we do share that information with Google search engines, um, and it's sometimes shown also on a Google search engine results page. So it does matter when it comes to shipping price or shipping information um, uh, because the Google user is actually seeing it before they click on some, uh, before they click on your listing right. page uh, and come to Etsy. Right, so again, it plays into that engagement element. Yes. Okay. All right, so our last question for today, another hot topic, um, does putting your shop on vacation mode impact your performance within search? Ratish, I'll start with you there. Yes, it can. The vacation mode on Etsy um, can really affect uh, Google uh, finding that your shop is pretty empty because we don't show any listings uh, when it comes to uh, a vacation, uh, when, a, when it comes to a shop which is on vacation mode. Um, uh, so Google has to recrawl that page after you are back from vacation in order to find that you're back active um, and then start ranking you again. So my advice when it comes to uh, being on vacation mode is don't go on vacation mode for an extended period of time so that Google, every time they come, they see that you're on vacation and they have to wait for re-ranking you on Google. Uh, so take your, take the time uh, if you need vacation um, uh, uh, on your shop, uh, but then be back on uh, non-vacation mode as much as possible so that Google can come back and recall you. Okay, and Andrew, how does putting your shop on vacation mode impact your search ranking on Etsy? It's a very similar answer. Okay. When you go on vacation mode, your listings are removed from search while you're gone. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that means you can't make those conversions, which okay. helps signal to the ranker that your listings in your shop are relevant for this query. For shorter stints, it's not gonna have a huge impact, but for longer stints, it can have a big impact. Mm -hmm. So much like Ratish said, you know, be thoughtful about the time you're taking, and right. when you're back, you know, be back. Right, it makes sense. Like when you're removing your items from search, you're missing out on those views, favorites, purchases, but we know that these search algorithms are constantly crawling and re-indexing, so when sellers return from vacation mode, it should balance out over time. Yeah, it's a great tool for sellers who need to step away, but yeah, definitely something to be mindful of. All right, so just to wrap up today's session, a few key takeaways here. Keywords are critical, especially when it comes to that listing title. Also, photography plays a huge role, whether it's direct or indirect. That conversion rate element is especially important for Etsy search. And video can also be helpful, especially for Google search. Your product descriptions are also super important. You should aim to incorporate relevant keywords in the first few sentences, and you should avoid copying your title verbatim or just listing out keywords. Remember, no keyword stuffing. Instead, you want to craft a sentence or two that incorporates a few of your top keywords in a way that sounds human and written in your brand's voice. Also, optimizing your listings for Etsy search is a great start and should help you get set up for success on Google. And you can iterate over time if you'd like to grow your presence on Google with some of the additional tips and insights that Ratish shared with us today. I want to give a big thank you to Ratish and Andrew for sharing all of their knowledge and expertise today. Optimizing your listings for Google and Etsy search can be such a game changer. So I really appreciate all of the helpful advice that you've both shared today. And I encourage everyone watching to take a moment, try applying some of these strategies to your own listings. And don't forget, you can register for the SEO follow-up workshop on etsyup.com. Thanks. 
There's no denying that we're facing a huge problem and plastic is a, a massive part of that. Uh, I'm Flora and I'm behind Washed Up Cards. I'd just been on this beach cleanup event and I was really shocked. I think the plastic problem that I'd been reading about and seeing on the news, it hit home more. And I actually ended up uh, finding some of these like colourful bits of plastic that I really wasn't expecting to find down there, like sequins and buttons. And, and I just stashed a few in my pocket and took them home. And I just decided to make cards with some of these bits of plastic that I'd found on the beach cleanup event. And they were kind of the early washed up cards. I don't just collect the little bits of plastic, the microplastic, which is kind of like less than, a, I think, an L um, in size. I collect whatever I find. I obviously clear them from the river where they're going to harm wildlife, where they're going to, you know, where they shouldn't be, and I put that in the rubbish. And then I take home the little bits that I want to clean and wash and put onto the cards. After um, a, a beach can walk, getting all like crafty, having that sort of almost mindfulness, thinking about like what I'm going to do with the plastic and doodling around. So yeah, I, I, um, I stamp a card and then I work out what plastic is gonna go on it. I have like pots of different colors. So if it's like um, the owl, I want to put an orange beak on it. I have a whole pot of orange plastic, which I can cut out a little bit of the orange triangle. I'm literally one of those people which like, as soon as it hits December, Christmas music, Christmas carols, like Christmas tree, as soon as like that moment of 1st December comes. I love it. I think there's something like incredibly like, warm and positive. I think Etsy's been like the most perfect platform for me to launch on. Um, it was so sort of easy and I had so much support and there's a great online community. I never thought that like starting a business would get me more connected with my community but it, it really really has. The first cards I ever sent were to my new neighbours saying I'm new, like if you need anything I'm here um, and that was a lovely reason to drop round and meet them. And, when I needed more Who Gives a Crap ethical neural company papers to wrap my cards in, I put a note on a Facebook group and about 800 people liked and commented and said, we're really local, we collect this, we'll give it to you, we want like, a home for it. And then also during that rough year that a lot of us had, I was talking about how the beach clean was helping me and one neighbour in particular, Zhao, who's, who's amazing, and she was like, can I come with you? Like, can I come on one of these beach clean walks with you? So we went down to Deptford and just had a lovely time. And again, she said, like I always say, it was a bit of a sort of a detox from, from the chaos of, of the pandemic. And yeah, she's been on a couple with me now. It's really lovely. We all could benefit from being outdoors more, having that like m moments in nature really soothe a lot of our like busy, hectic lives that we live. So yeah, I think more people, the better, should get down and join me on Beach Cleans. We're thrilled that so many of you joined us today for Etsy Up. You came ready to learn, and I want to thank all of you for your participation. And congratulations to those of you who received some exciting surprises in the live chat. If you want to dive deeper into some of the topics we covered today, we have some excellent follow-up workshops available on EtsyUp.com that will help you take your business to the next level. And for those of you looking for more connections with other sellers, head on over to the forums at community.etsy.com, where we'll be continuing the conversation. Before we sign off, time for one last poll. What are you planning to do next? Will you sign up for a workshop, redeem your Adobe Express offer, or head over to the Etsy forums? Let us know. Thanks again for tuning in. And from all of us here at Etsy, we wish you a successful year ahead. Bye, everyone.